Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to um, run a log log regression and then interpret the uh, regression coefficient estimate results from our log log regression. So, uh, yeah, let's suppose that we start off with the following model. Um, and in this model, the independent uh, or explanatory variables, education, experience, and age, are all in long terms, log terms. And our response variable, wage, the, uh, the dependent variable is in log terms as well. So let's say we, you know, we have this model. Uh, let's say we run, we collect some data, and we run a, a few regressions, uh, and we come up with the following. Uh, these results um, you might get from something like uh, our software, um, you know, our statistics software. You might get uh, regression results that look something like this. Um, so for our estimate of beta naught, we have the intercept, intercept here, 1.5. For our intercept of uh, beta 1, we have um, the education coefficient here, 3.3. Uh, it actually looks something like this. Um, these I just created and you know made up myself, so don't really get any uh, true intuition from them. Um, but they're not unreasonable. So uh, let's say that our estimate um, for the beta 1 coefficient is the following 3.3. Estimate for beta 2 is 1.2, and our estimate for uh, beta 3 is this uh, 0.4. How do we interpret that? You know, if we had a change in education, uh, you know, or what can we expect uh, a change in education to have an effect on uh, wages? Well, before we could uh, interpret our results, we need to get a few kind of assumptions out of the way. Um, the first assumption is the cost Markov assumptions. Um, they just the cost Markov assumptions need to hold in order for us to correctly uh, interpret these um, regression coefficient estimates. Um, so, second off, we need our regression coefficient estimates to be statistically significant. So, the way I arbitrarily wrote these, the t values uh, are sufficiently large and the p values are sufficiently small that they're statistically significant. They also need to be practically significant. Practically significant is a qualitative kind of thing, um, but it's it's in the sense that the, the results here can't be minuscule. You know, they have to have like a noticeable effect. Uh, and then lastly, when we interpret the uh, say beta one here, the effect of education on wages, we are going to need to hold our other variables, ed education experience, our experience and age. We need to hold the other variables in our multivariable um, regression. We need to hold them constant. So if we uh, can agree to these assumptions, uh, we could then uh, get to interpreting beta one. So to correctly interpret our beta 1 coefficient, the first thing we're going to do is take the differential of our model with respect to education. So that's what I'm setting up here. Uh, what happens when we find, when we take that first derivative with respect to education? Well, since we have log wage here, uh, remember like if you have a log of x, the differential of log x is um, dx over x. So uh, when we take the first derivative of uh, log wages here, we have the change in wage divided by wages. Um, uh, similarly, over here, when we do it to log, uh, beta 1 times log education, we get d education over education times beta 1. Um, one thing to notice about this, so d wage is just kind of like the change in wage. You know, we're curious how this change in education is going to affect the change in wage. So something interesting, um, that d wage right here is the change in wage, and the wage here is um, the, the base level of wages. So d wage over d wage, sorry, d wage over wage, that is the change in wages in percent. So what's interesting about this is uh, if you take this times 100, that's going to give you the percent change in wages. So this, the percent change in wages is a, a useful um, statistic that we could use to interpret our results. So the next step here, we're going to times both sides by 100, so that we have 100 times d wage over wage, and we have 100 times the change in education divided by education. So reinterpreting what those are, so 100 times d wage over wage, that is uh, equivalent to the percent change in wages. So reinterpreting this result, we now have the percent change in wages is equal to the percent change in education times our beta 1 coefficient. Okay, so we did a little math, but what exactly does that mean? How do we interpret the value of beta 1 that we got here? How do we interpret this 3.3? So what this tells us is that if we increase education by 1%, we can expect wages to increase by beta 1%. Since beta 1 is 3.3, if we increase education by 1%, then we expect wages to increase by 3.3%. Simple as that. 
So this beta 1 term here is the partial elasticity. Um, a way to interpret it is it's the percent change in wages given a percent change in education holding all everything else constant. Cool, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if it was, be sure to give the video a thumbs up um, and let me know if you have any questions and thanks and have a good day. Bye.